Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, Jacob. Okay. How are you? How are you? I'm okay. Good. Good morning. Good. Hi, Kishwan. Hi. Yeah. So, let's check actually what we did till now. Okay, then we'll progress to the next part. So we see in actually like okay requirement specification application wise we are okay in data model we see to like okay edit input edit validate data transform property property analysis qualify like okay almost yeah good to go decision yeah uh, the main thing we talked about decision table decision tree map values and when rule. So this is the main thing, and Millie Lee talked about the declare expression rule as well. So that's is the initial level. We'll okay. Then we talked about these four things, not in detail, but yeah, what is required to start with the integration? We have talked about the integration four things in organization. We talked about all these rules: calendar, division, work group, work baskets, routing. Yep. In the process, case type, correspondence, flow, flow action, SLAs, validate, work parties, almost we have seen these rules. Reports, we talked about category, definition, and shortcuts. Security, yeah, we talked about access group rule, ARO, access role name, some of the bits on that, and there are some. Uh, Additional things which is mainly required for uh, third-party authentication or if you want to do SSOs or anything might be this will be useful on that time Yeah, so I think we need to talk about a little bit on agents agent will have not yet taught such anything Okay, so we will talk about agents uh, class class group we have talked this not needed database database table declare index yeah I'll tell you about DSS and RSS and on that okay. 
Okay. Uh, flow marker Hadoop. That's fine. We'll talk about this as well. Product. What do you mean by product and product patch? Okay. Yeah. Room set system system node system settings. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. We need to talk about a little bit on this too. Our uh, test cases and uh, unit test suits. Okay. Fine. So some of the things we need to cover up on the system admin and in the technical point we'll talk about this two rule circumstance okay what do you mean by concept of circumstance single and multivariate so there we will talk about the circumstance definition Okay. Yeah, other things are actually like, uh, not needed at the moment. That is uh, like when you progress further, you will get to know more things on this. Okay. And yeah, you are part. Yes, some of the things you are part actually we have done. Okay. Uh, navigation. Paragraph, portal, section, scheme. Yeah, little bit we'll talk about this one on dynamic UI. Okay. So mainly like this, then we can be referred from the UI gallery. UI gallery is the good to explore the different UI concepts. So that I think, yeah, uh, I told about that yesterday. Fine. So this is actually almost, uh, we have covered most of the topics which is we want to cover as now. Some of the topics actually we just need to uh, catch up now, okay. So if you see your application within that, uh, we have many more concepts. We have IP center validation and everything. We have created many type of rule within that, okay. So now, if you see, you have uh, now we'll talk about the migration or actually like how you can uh, going to create a rule. Okay, actually, which is actually like we have done that. Now, how you can migrate to other system? Okay, like how you can go for deployment? Okay, so for the deployment point of view, Pika has uh, multiple feature. Okay. So we have export and import and a package rule. Okay. So there are three options and there is one more option we call it migrate. Okay. So there are four options which is available for the deployment of the project. Okay. Once you are done with the changes and everything was tested and you want to go with that. So before that, if you want to go to do that, all the rules whatever the things you are working, okay, that need to be checked out, okay. So let's say we want to do the bulk action. The rules are still not done yet. So select all, test bulk, insert that in all the comments and start. Normally, like when we want to deploy, okay, we want the, uh, the rule set to be logged. Okay, all the rules need to be checked out and we want to make the uh, move the application. The next thing which we should do is log the rule sets. Okay, all the rule set, whatever that you have, log the rule sets. Then. So let's say we want to log the current versions of that. Okay, 
so all the rules are in there in the zero one log that so give a password so that you can anytime if you want to unlock it you can able to do that as well okay so i have logged this version okay and i want to unlock this version so that any changes if in the future i can make in this one okay similarly it will ask you for other rules set to be also uh, logged okay we'll see that out one by one so now if you go to your designer studio your application if you go to the distribution you can see multiple things package export import migrate and package work okay so package and export that two are used to uh, export the application you are creating your package or you are going to export the rule so both does the same if you're going to create a product rule or package rule okay so normally that we call as wrap rule admin product so normally we create uh, in bigger terminology we normally call it create the wrap okay so if you say you go to the package you will see multiple things there okay so you can see this is the 12 step process okay so where you want to does that so normally like i have lost that if you say i want to create my in my purchase so it will be asked for 0 to now okay so here it will like which application i want to include okay this is the version 0101 and framework application Okay. so there is any dependencies it will check for any dependencies on that but currently like we are not implementing any dependencies so we can go with that then it will look for the organization element okay so it is like the organization will be pick up and it also pick up the uh, so normally like we don't want SAE organization in this so we can exclude that okay. so here you can see uh, all the uh, access groups the purchase and framework level access groups and then you will get the operators so if you want to uh, move with the operators you can go with them otherwise uh, you can exclude that so let's say we don't want to go with the and we have the data but other things that we want to go okay. then all the work baskets will come okay so normally like uh, all this at the pega one so if you don't want this will be there in that okay so if you don't want we can actually exclude that some of the things uh, the work basket so that uh, don't need that it will be by default it will be there okay so just we need the three work basket from this then you have the work groups so we don't want two as well Then we have the two data tables, products and card. Then any code archive, any jar files, if you have included in your application, it will be displayed here. Then all the tables, which we clearly want. So normally, let's see, if it is Oracle XC, uh, the schema changes, right? Actually, like for this, whatever the changes you will going to put, it will going to uh, so the database should be pre previously should be there otherwise this jar file will not going to work okay so normally uh, all this schema the three things you are seeing here right so if you don't want to move that so normally like uh, i don't my schema is not there so i don't want to include this three things now otherwise i'll not able to import it 
if it is i know if it leave uh, the same schema same name should be there in the other environment or other places as well if i create that it will ask for the personal edition database connections and then everything there okay then we have this uh, integration resource so currently like uh, we have some of the things we have uh, service package or anything it will create with that so this is the which we have created the service service package so by default that is coming in that okay so this actually like uh, many things actually which we need to so now it's actually you can see that all the classes rules data it will be complete that okay so if you see now if you go to the modify it will open the product rule so that's the wrap the rule admin product okay so here actually you can see many options now okay so that the complete details uh, will be you will see it here so there is no dependency we have mentioned so there is no dependency okay so this is if you like if you want to put any readme file you can put it here what's this tool actually okay this is an html rule normally that will be give you the instruction about that so in this in the product rule you can see many things the application okay so you can see there are many uh, type if you want to include the associated data include the rule history include the data types okay so that will be included part of the application itself and then currently like we are doing for the application currently okay so by default all the rule set which is associated with this application will also picked up you don't need to include the individual rule set if you have to do just individual rule set we do it by this one option okay. so these are the two data instances we are going to pick and all these are the instances like up you can see all the data instances we are going to include it here so this i feel normally we call as pj dynas key okay so if you can see there are uh, all the different things we have included then we have any jar files we are including okay and here you can see that allow unlocked rule set versions okay so that's actually like if you say if you want to create a product file with the unlocked rule by rule set version you need to select that now if i create that because all my rule sets are not logged it will give me in warning okay i need to give the name of the product file okay so when creating the product file it will say me that uh, the rule sets are not there logged yeah so that you get the message so 1234567 all the things actually now we need to um, so let's open it from here itself now and we we'll lock in and lock it Okay, so check with the SQL rest. This is like your all integration rules which we did on this. So you have to lock it. And now, if it's actually like if you don't want to lock it, okay, you want to move uh, with the same number of rules. So what you can like you can do at the moment. Uh, you don't want to unlock everything. So just I click this flag. 
and I click on the create product file once again. So this time uh, it will not give you an error. This will actually able to go with that. But as a normal practice in the uh, production environment or go live environment, we have to log them. Actually, because uh, otherwise, actually, if you say you have deployed something that into that environment, and now you have made some changes into the development environment once again, so there will be syncing issue or reconciliation need to be done in that scenario. So, what is your dev environment and what's your in other environment? They should be in sync, right? So that's the best approach. Log the rule set, uh, check in everything, log the rule set, and then create the product file for the this one. Okay. So now you can see that uh, there are 2,000 records, which is the rules which we have created as part of the project. You can deploy it now, and then if you click onto this, a zip file will be there. So this zip file now we can able to import it. Okay, so now you can see uh, it's already downloaded for us. Okay. Oh, it's twice skin. Okay, so this is the rule. Now it's created. So normally, what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, import it back. Okay, so this is the way you can create your product file. So this is uh, required only if you are doing for the first time. Like when you need to do everything, then it will like you need to do this. In other ways, actually, like we normally like go with the this way. Uh, the, the rule sets need to be included. Okay, so there is different way when we are doing it for. Uh, just for as a patch like once you have deployed the complete application next time you don't need to do all these activities so there will be some difference actually when you do it for the first time and when you are doing for the next time okay so this is a similar option like if you have uh, we have done the package so here actually like if you say like if you want to go with the which option you want to go with the uh, which thing so there actually like in that scenario, we can go with the export option as well. So like if you want to just a specific uh, rule set, I want to delegate and all that. So if you say I want to pick any specific rule set, so I know which rule set I need to pick because I know which rule set I have there. So let's say I want to go with my purchase and which version I need to pick. I need to pick the 0101 or 0102. Okay and what name I need to give it here. So this you can see, uh, purchase the rule set, okay. And if I do the perform export, this is also going to create a uh, zip file for me, okay. So this will be for 0102 version. So there you can see that 190 records as well. So this actually like can contain the all the uh, currently if you go there in application, you will not find that much rule, but all the associated rule will also come with that. Why it uh, came with the that much rule? It's contain 190 records. I cannot see the num uh, here, but when while importing the same rule, I can see that. So let's say I just in, uh, downloaded the same thing again. Okay. So now I have two different zip files. Okay. Now if I need to come back, if you go to the application. Okay. In the distribution, you can see now two options, import or migrate. So if your uh, other environment are directly connected in the network, you can go with the migrate option. 
So you don't need to zip file extraction. Directly you can do it from here itself. So you can see here you have all the uh, product name will come directly here. So if you say you purchase product name, okay, which version? So this is the version which is created. So so okay. So that's it. Like if you say you want to use the existing zip file, okay, and if you have the target system, which is actually like is the part of your application, okay, in the network, so you can directly does that hit here. So there is like you can need a user ID and password for that environment. And then if you just select that and just do the migrate, okay, it will update in there it's directly. You don't need to do anything else. So this is a key to simplify to the uh, the DevOps part. It's like it is a continuation integration we can able to achieve from this, okay. So this is a click option of migrate. Another option is your import. Okay, so if you click on import, you will see the zip file, you can pick it up here. So if you say actually um, put it here, so you can pick the zip file here. To thirteen zero three. Oh, sorry, I'm not in download. Sorry. <laughs> So let's see, we are going to pick up, it's just picking this uh, upper one, okay. So just click on open, okay. So it says that it already exists because I have created it from here itself, okay. So the zip file is here itself, is there, okay. So here you can see uh, all the zip files which is already uh, came into your project, okay. So if you want to see the content of that file, you can able to see it here. Okay, so there actually you can see that this contain 182 rule from non-version. So all that uh, mainly like rule OBJ, all our association rule came into that. Okay. And then some of the data instances, which is actually like required, came with that. Okay. So you can see this, what is the content of your zip file here. Okay, once you're happy, okay, you want to move with that, you can click next. So normally I don't want to do it in my system because it's the application is already there. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually like you see that it's already there in my system. So I cannot do it again. Normally it need to be done into the some other system. So you have actually just click next, next, next. You will be able to uh, import the application into another environment. Okay. So this is the way uh, like we can go for uh, creation of uh, product file. So the complete application need to be deployed into some other place. We can create a product rule. Okay. And similarly, like if you can see, a patch rule is also there, right? So patch is actually which is required on top of, like say you have deployed uh, the application and you find that like uh, it's not working as expected and you need to make some changes or some of the rules are missed in your product rule. So that time it will be you, so you can create a uh, patch rule on that, okay? So here it's like you can see for which product rule you are going to create that. So you see, product patch for purchase. So you need to name the, oh, you need, should name, know the name of that. It's not, by default it's coming. So I need to go to my 
product tool. Yeah. This is my product tool and this is my version. So merely like you can see here, uh, it doesn't contain many things in that, like which rule set and which data class you want to include. So that's it. In the patch file, like uh, the rules which you have missed or some other um, association you have missed, you want to pick that, you can able to pick from here. Okay, rule sets to include and data to include. So this is the uh, patch rule we can create that. Okay. So that's the product patch rule. So there actually if you say if you want to include any additional version of the rule set, we can put it here. So which version of the rule set you want to put? You want to put some note. You want to save this. So this rule is now created. You want to create a zip file for this one. So they same all the rules of that will be picked up from there. Okay. So now this is the zip file you can extract. Okay. So that the same way either with the migrate or either with the import option we can get it now. Okay. So all the rules of your application or your rule set we can be picked up from this way and can be deployed into another environment now. Any questions yet? No questions? I think I get that part. I get this. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Okay, so next thing, actually, I'll just tell you about two more rules, like DSS and RSS. Okay, so normally, uh, what do you mean by DSS is dynamic system settings. Okay. So like see many variables to this world actually like we say you need to make some changes to make it effect to work in Pega environment, right? That is actually we have system settings. So many of the settings actually in Pega environment, it comes with a file which we call as um, okay, if you go to your tomcat and you will see the web apps in the Vivex, you have a PR wave folder, okay, and within that you have Vivana, within that you have classes. So here you can see a XML document, which is we call as PR config, okay. So this file is the configuration file, okay. So in previous version of Pega, like before Pega 6.2, okay, all the settings you need to put into the PR config only. And if you have to make um, any changes to the any configuration properties, okay, if you have to need to make changes to any of the properties, like some of the properties are still here, like five, six are there, okay. So earlier versions, it contained a lot of things, okay. So this is, you can see this is the minimum format for the PR config file. Only settings which is required to access settings in the database are included. All other settings will be familiarly located only in the file and now data admin system settings, okay? So what they did it, like if you see, what was happening is previously was, if you have to make some changes here, you need to restart the server because uh, the PR config file will be loaded while you restart the server only. Otherwise, 
the changes will be not uh, impact but with the DSS okay so if you go to your system admin you will see a rule called as dynamic system settings so in the run time you can able to say set some of the values here like if you say for bigger rules indexing you can make it true okay what's the help for help location so this is actually your help URI this is your SMA application URI so in the time if you want to make the changes to it it will use this URI to work on that okay so you are now it's actually like every system settings of the configuration you make it dynamic so if you make changes now it will reflect there now so you don't need to restart that from here and this one you can also control using the uh, logic like if you can put some logic you can want to set the properties using programmatically like uh, in the runtime you can able to do that as well which was not possible with the PR config uh, XML okay so the DSS makes the simpler so if it's something if, if you want to set that values so it's just simple just values so you need to define the uh, which it is related to and what is actually the indexing for that so this is actually your specific things you need to know about that so there is actually like uh, this is advanced things so if you see some of the things this one config setting reference so this is around 200 pages which is actually tell you about all the uh, settings which is available in the PR config and it is tell you about what are the different things if what the value if you put what will really happen with that okay so this is little advanced things as of now like uh, how you can configure and how you can import that okay so this is uh, the place the value you want to update so you need to uh, write in that way and this is all predefined so you need to use the same values otherwise it will not make any impact on that okay so this is a clip we call this DSS okay and there is one more thing we call it system settings okay so system settings uh, is mainly like uh, what is the purpose of the system settings is like see uh, when we are using a web service right so like if you if you are in a dev you are want to connect with the dev environment of the web service if you are in a uh, system test you want to connect with the system test environment of the day right and if it is you are in production you want to use the production web service where you are getting it so many times when I have given you example that is clearly the global one so because uh, that will be same for every environment but many organization actually they create their own web service like that right so you want to connect the the URL so what is the URL you will see it will be different for different environment right so if you see it here like PDN okay so here if you can see that you have the production level one two three four five so five is the production okay four is your pre-prod three is UAT two is system like uh, development and one is your POC environment so here you can see that you can able to put the values here okay if you want to make it in the production it should use that in the uh, four it should use that so you can depend on to the production level you can set the different values here okay and in the runtime we have a function called as get uh, rule system settings okay so we need to pass this like uh, this value and this value to get the value of so if you see we have this rule system settings okay so this is a function from that you can get the what value you should use okay so the rule set and the setting name you need to get it the value of this so in this way like if you want to connect with the different things and you want to set different values in the different environment you can able to use this rule system settings okay so normally that is we call as rss rule system settings 
Okay. Any questions on this? DSS and RSS. The system setting. Um, what is the difference between the two? I know. The, I know the DSS is for where you do dynamically, right? You don't need to restart the the, the server. So when, yeah. are you saying that when you do the uh, RSS so, you have to restart the server? No. See, actually, DSS is actually like okay. You have your configuration parameter one one. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. you need to create five five different DSS for each environment. Okay. So you can achieve that, but you need to create five DSS for each of the production level. Okay, and in the runtime environment, you need to check which production environment you have, and then based on that, you need to call it. Okay, okay. but uh, with the, this rule system setting, actually, like uh, for each one, like normally, mainly we use in the connector and services. So there is the you have endpoint URL, right? Yes. So that endpoint URL will be different for different environments. Yes. Right. So that you have like different production level. Okay. So there you can change the different values here. So if you say I want to give it uh, PDN POC PDN uh, Dev. Okay. PDN System Test. This one will be PDN UAG and this will be PDN Prod. Okay. So now I want to get the value of this one five. If my current system is production, I'll get this value. Yes. And if it is my UAT, it will going to pick this value. Okay. Okay. So that's the use of the rule system settings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, explain you about the DSS and RSS. Yeah. Yeah. Next, actually, I'll tell you about the this uh, some more tools which we have. So normally, when you see performance, okay. So this is actually like in Pega, we also call it PAL. Okay. Yeah. So what actually is, uh, in this actually we do is it change the performance of your application. Okay. So you can see that initially it will be some values. So whatever the rules you are doing. Okay. So main thing uh, we need to take it here is this count, R count, rule count. Okay. And the alert count. So how many alerts are generated in this? Okay. How many rules are getting run? How many rules are like uh, in the circumstance it's picking up and how much time it's taking up on that. So now if you say actually I want to add the reading. Okay. So in this you can see a delta. So after this from this one I have run four rules. Okay. So if you say if I go here and I'm going to launch my uh, manager portal. I'm going to create a case. And I'll, again, I will take a reading and I'll try to justify that uh, the number of rules which is running, it's actually on the. So let's say I'm going to create a purchase case. Okay, so this actually I've done it. So, so many things have happened within this one. Let's say we go. Okay. So now if you go there, if you click add reading once more, so in between it runs this many rules. Okay. And uh, this many operations happen. So you can able to justify how it's really happening. And if you click on to this one, you will get a complete detail about that as well. So this will be many things is you can see here like how many elapsed times, okay, test ex rule execution, rule execution count, request summary, 
parsing statistics, connect statistics, tracker statistics, client statistics, CPU times, database access related things, node level summary, service statistics, and declare pages related things. So this many data you have on this. Okay. So based on this, actually we can justify that like our system is going to work uh, perfectly or it's not going to create the with the stress testing like during the performance or anything mainly like we check this performance results and based on that we can able to justify our application is going to work well or not okay so this is normally like if you can see go back it will show back here and if you just want to use the database related uh, tracing so you can start the db trace so whatever the database operation you are going to do it will create a separate file for you okay. so let's say if you want to go back here and uh, i think somehow the data is get deleted in the product i don't know but currently it's coming blank completely so just i think i created product name will be a problem okay it's moved okay good something is like this some problem with that okay So now I have to go here, okay, and you can see add reading. This is actually mainly role of a BA, uh, not BA, I'm saying LSA. Actually, LSA is going to do this. So you don't need to worry about uh, this. For understanding, you should know how this can be used. Okay, now it's done. And reading. So there you can see that in between how many routes are done. So normally like this count is matter. So you see it's uh, looking for 8, 9, 5, 6 rule and from that just 120 rules is run. Okay. So these are the rules like uh, to run this many rule, it run 120 rule from that. So that's the circumstance uh, rule resolution comes into the picture. Okay. And if you stop the DB trace, it will going to show you that. So this is actually like one more, uh, the DB thread is comes into that. And we can able to trace that details as well. So that is in a text file. Okay. It's multiple times. So any database related things, if you want to check it out, you can use this option. Uh, in the notepad, it will be difficult to check this one. Okay, we can use the some other uh, specific things to check it out. It will be look better in the notepad plus plus. Yeah, somehow some better. So we can able to check it out this report and it will be need to analyze that. 
Okay. So that's your uh, DB trace you can able to use within the trailer. Okay. And then we have the alerts. You can see the alerts from here as well. Like you can see the alert counts 97238. So you can see the alerts from here as well. Well as you can see at the developer toolbar. Okay, so here you can see that some uh, different type of alert type: browser interaction, DB time, okay, rule assembly time. So this one is like you can get more details about that. So let's see DB time. Okay, which table is trying to get the details? Okay, what is the query it runs? So this is the 500 milliseconds, it take more than that. So it's taking more than five times from that. Okay, so this detail was completely for that warning. So this one also, we can able to uh, trace it, why it's taking that much time, do we need to do uh, in something need to do to resolve that. So we can able to increase the performance of that system. Okay, so this is actually we have different alerts we have. Okay, so that's uh, some of the tools. So we'll talk about uh, some more uh, guardrails. Also, we need to talk about something on the guardrails. Okay, guardrails, SMA, and agents. We're going to talk on tomorrow's class. Okay. Any queries? Any questions? No? Okay. Thanks. Thanks everyone. So we'll meet again on tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.